Researchers, welcome. Today we will talk about our Kaspersky Threat Analysis Toolkit with experts from Kaspersky Lab. Most importantly, we will explain what makes it unique and how it helps researchers save time. For context, we need to recall another term, threat intelligence. Essentially, it is knowledge about threats, tactics, and techniques of attackers that helps investigators understand what kind of sample they are dealing with. A simple ransomware or a complex module for an APT attack on critical infrastructure. The concept of threat intelligence, TI, covers indicators of compromise, tactics and techniques of attackers, risks and steps to prevent undesirable consequences. To use TI data as material for writing rules for SIEM and EDR, it first needs to be collected, processed, analyzed and then used to write detection logic. The Kaspersky Lab team has rethought the approach to threat research and added a couple of fresh ideas to the Kaspersky Threat Analysis Toolkit, which is designed to make researchers' lives easier. The toolkit provides access to in-depth analytical data based on sandbox analysis of samples that Kaspersky Lab has found over more than 25 years of operation. Thus, we can talk about an unprecedented threat intelligence database in the industry. No need to be modest here. So what's in the toolkit? Let's count. First, the main star is our cloud-based sandbox. It is notable for having built-in tools for high-quality threat attribution, analysis of similar samples, and advanced detection of new threats. Let's take a closer look at it. The main advantage is the reduction in equipment costs. You don't need to spend resources on its maintenance and troubleshooting. There are no scalability issues. Scaling up may require additional resources and time to acquire new equipment and deploy it. All you need to do to simply analyze a file is to visit our portal and easily submit the file. And another advantage is accessibility. You can send a file for analysis from anywhere with an internet connection. You can even access our portal from your phone and submit a file for analysis. After analysis, Sandbox displays a report. Verdicts, suspicious activities, network connections. In addition to classifying triggered verdicts, the sandbox outputs a sample execution graph. In the execution map, the file's actions are displayed. The sandbox constructs a MITRE matrix. The user can view various system events such as different types of module loading into a process, loaded PA images, file operations, registry operations, as well as other events from process creation and termination. Then information about the extracted files is provided, including files that were transmitted over the network and files that were saved on the system due to sandbox execution. For a more in-depth and detailed study of behavior, analysts can thoroughly download a comprehensive and extensive debug report that includes all key and relevant events and crucial Win API calls. Additionally, the user can download the pickup file and import it into Airshark for more detailed examination. Execution map shows all processes created as a result of the sample execution. This includes the process name, command line, PIDs in the process, parent PID and its name, as well as suspicious actions with specified fields and MITRE techniques associated with this event. As an example, let's take a stealer attributed to the Charming Kitten APT group. On the execution map, it adds itself to the startup by importing a registry hive, then it steals credentials from browsers. It executes a DLL from an open directory. Finally, it sends the data to a remote server, Another interesting example of a file attributed to the APT group Sofishim. It also has persistence through autorun on the execution map, masquerading, creating a file with the name of legitimate files. Next, persistence through with Linagon helper. And the most interesting part, code injection into legitimate process explorer. Then we will see how explorer.exe gains privileges. It disables the firewall and connects to the command center using dynamic DNS to script the addresses of its C2 servers, such information is extremely useful for SOC analysts. They can write new hunting rules, latch onto a new indicator, or understand the infection chain. They can see which process loaded a library, which process injected it, and much more. Sandboxes are primarily focused on dynamic analysis, observing the behavior of code during its execution. This contrasts with static analysis, which examines the code without executing it. The sandbox monitors the behavior of the running code, capturing system calls, file system interactions, registry modifications, network activity, and various other actions. The behavior information is recorded and sent for analysis. Based on behavior, we write detection logic, 
Additionally, the sandbox integrates with TI data. If, for example, the analyze file contacts a known threat intelligence command center, this is highlighted in the report. The detection logic is supported internally by experts. We write hunts in our custom developed language, and the client sees the results as verdicts highlighted with activity spikes on the execution graph. Suspicious activity typically refers to certain suspicious actions by a sample. Each suspicious activity generally has a severity level. Low severity is usually more of an informational event and can often be present in both legitimate and malicious files. For example, adding files to startup, making requests to get a list of running processes, hostname, IP address, and other details, etc. Suspicious activities of high severity most often indicate actions performed by a malicious file. For example, code injection into another process. The main goal of suspicious activities is to clearly demonstrate the behavior of the file, based on which an analyst can assess the potential impact and purpose of the software, and build the investigation and response process. Secondly, the threat analysis also includes the threat attribution engine, which deserves special mention as it allows for effectively linking new attacks to known APT groups and the software that they use. The Kaspersky threat attribution engine allows you to link a new attack to known APT threats. This could be an actor, a malicious company, or malware. Ktaya extracts genotypes, binary code fragments from the string of the file being analyzed, and searches for similarities with known APT threat samples to determine the likelihood of attribution. Knowing which APT group is behind the attack helps the incident response team investigate, respond, and contain the threat. Based on the data obtained from the threat intelligence portal, threat analysts can identify the goals and motives of the APT group, determine possible attack vectors, apply Sigma rules that detect techniques used by the APT group, and import IOCs related to the APT group. Another technology is similarity, which searches for samples similar to material being studied. To find similar files, the technologies use special hashes that are extracted from the file by the antivirus engine. Different code snippets, imports, structures, and other traits. I should note that KTA and Similarity use different approaches for detecting file similarities, so similar samples from KTA may differ from those obtained in Similarity. In the Similarity check, we see information about the found similar files, status, verdict, confidence, MD5. Having the MD5 hashes of similar files, the incident response team can scan telemetry and find the files within the infrastructure, obtaining information about other infected hosts or preventing their infection and a multitude of customizable parameters from execution time and commands to be run to configuring images. Additionally, the research sandbox and attribution engine can be deployed in an on-premises format if needed. The sample can be on your machine via a link or even not downloaded. The sandbox will fetch the file from any convenient format. You can even provide a simple URL. You can request a demo version via the link in the description or by scanning the QR code on the screen and evaluate yourself. As the saying goes, seeing is believing. In upcoming videos, we will tell you about specific threats that can be analyzed with our threat analysis. Stay tuned and see you soon.